And Microsoft just proved raw size doesn't matter in AI anymore. They've built a math model that outperforms giants hundreds of times larger, and it was trained in only one week on 64 GPUs. On top of that, they rolled out two new in-house models, a voice AI that can generate a full minute of natural audio in under a second, and their first foundation language model, trained on 15,000 H100 GPUs, now starting to roll out inside Copilot. This is a turning point, so let's talk about it. All right, let's start with R star 2 agent. You've all heard the phrase chain of thought before. That's when large language models solve a problem by stretching their reasoning out step by step, kind of like writing down a long explanation. The idea is that if the model just thinks a little longer, it'll catch its mistakes and land on the right answer. The problem? That doesn't always work. If the model takes a wrong turn early on, it usually just doubles down on the mistake instead of fixing it. It's like someone confidently working through a math problem, but making a small error in the first step. The entire solution falls apart, no matter how carefully they show their work. Microsoft's researchers looked at this and said, okay, thinking longer clearly has its limits. So instead of pushing for longer chains, what if we get the model to use tools, check its work, and adjust along the way? And that's where R star 2 agent makes the difference. Unlike typical models that just output text, this one uses agentic reinforcement learning to actually interact with a Python environment during its reasoning process. Think of it as giving the model access to a calculator, a sandbox, and a notebook all in one. When it runs into a math problem, it can stop, write a bit of code, run that code, look at the result, and then decide if it's on the right track. If the numbers don't add up, it adjusts and tries again. This dynamic back and forth process makes it a lot more reliable because it's not locked into one way of solving things. Now, training a model like this means handling massive amounts of tool calls. We're talking tens of thousands of code execution requests happening at the same time during training. If you try to run all of that naively, the GPUs end up just waiting around, wasting resources. So the Microsoft team had to solve some serious infrastructure headaches. First, they built a distributed code execution system that can process 45,000 concurrent tool calls with sub-second latency. Essentially, the code runs super fast without clogging up the system. They also set it up so code execution is isolated from the main training, but still keeps the throughput high by balancing loads across CPU workers. On top of that, they created a dynamic rollout scheduler. Instead of assigning GPU tasks in a fixed way, it looks at real-time GPU cache availability and hands out tasks based on that. That way, no GPU sits idle while others are overloaded. The end result? They trained this entire frontier level model in just one week, running on 64 AMD MI300X GPUs. That's a fraction of the resources you'd expect for something at this level. But the real magic is in the algorithm they used, something called group relative policy optimization with resampling on correct, or GRPO ROC. Normally, in reinforcement learning, a model gets rewarded if it lands on the right final answer, even if its reasoning was messy or inefficient. That's not ideal, because it teaches the model to brute force its way through. Instead of reasoning cleanly, GRPO ROC flips this by oversampling initial attempts, filtering out the noisy, error-ridden traces, and putting more weight on examples where the tool usage was efficient and formatting was clean. The model still sees failed attempts, because learning from mistakes is important, but the positive reinforcement comes from the clean, high-quality reasoning traces. Over time, this makes the model not just accurate, but also efficient in how it reasons. The training itself followed a very deliberate strategy. At the start, they didn't even let the model reason. Stage one was all about instruction following and formatting tool calls correctly. They capped responses at 8,000 tokens, which forced the model to learn concise strategies instead of rambling. Even at this stage, accuracy on benchmarks shot from basically zero to over 70%. Then in stage two, they loosened the limit to 12,000 tokens, giving the model room to handle more complex reasoning. And by stage three, they filtered out all the easy problems the model already solved, so it only trained on the toughest cases. This step-by-step buildup meant it never got comfortable. It was always 
push to refine and stretch its abilities. The results are pretty wild. On the AME24 benchmark, our Star 2 agent scored 80.6% accuracy. On AME25, it hit 69.8%. To put that in perspective, it outperformed DeepSeek R1, which is a massive 671 billion parameter model. And it did this while using significantly fewer reasoning tokens, around 10,000 on average, compared to over 17,000 for other models. That efficiency isn't just about math either. Even though it was only trained on math problems, it showed strong transfer skills on scientific reasoning tasks and still held up well on general alignment benchmarks. That tells us the training style and the agentic approach give the model a more adaptable kind of intelligence, not just memorized math tricks. When researchers looked inside how it was working, they noticed something new. In addition to the usual forking tokens that pushed the model to try different solution paths, our Star 2 agent developed what they call reflection tokens. These pop up when the model is responding directly to tool feedback, like analyzing a Python output and deciding what went wrong. That's a clear sign of environment-driven reasoning. Instead of only looking inward, it's adapting in response to external feedback. That's a big shift from traditional chain of thought reasoning, and it opens the door to models that can reason in richer, more interactive ways. While that's a breakthrough in reasoning, Microsoft has also introduced two new in-house models, MAI Voice One and MAI One Preview, designed for speech and language. Let's begin with MAI Voice One. This is their new speech generation model, and it's built for speed, quality, and versatility. Here's the crazy part. It can generate one minute of high fidelity, natural sounding audio in less than one second, and it only needs a single GPU to do it. That makes it perfect for interactive assistance, podcast narration, or even consumer devices where you don't have access to a giant server farm. It's based on a transformer architecture trained on a large multilingual data set, which means it works well across different languages and can handle both single speaker and multi-speaker outputs. Microsoft is already integrating MAI Voice One into products. If you've used Copilot daily for news summaries, some of those voice updates are powered by this model. And in Copilot Labs, you can actually try it out yourself, turning text into audio stories or guided narratives. What stands out is how efficiently it runs. Other systems often require multiple GPUs and a lot of overhead, but because MAI Voice One can run on just one, it becomes feasible to put this kind of capability directly into consumer devices or low latency cloud services. Then there's MAI One Preview, which is Microsoft's first end-to-end -end in house foundation language model. Until now, Microsoft often licensed or integrated models from outside, like OpenAI's GPT family, but this one is all theirs built on their own infrastructure. It uses a mixture of experts architecture and was trained on a massive scale with about 15,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. That's no small investment. The focus here isn't on being the most powerful enterprise model, but on being really good at instruction following and conversational tasks. It's optimized for everyday consumer use cases, writing emails, answering questions, summarizing text, helping with school assignments, all the stuff people use AI assistance for day to day. You can already find MAI One Preview on the Elem Arena platform, where it's listed alongside other big models for comparison. And Microsoft is gradually rolling it out inside Copilot, starting with text-based scenarios. They're collecting user feedback to refine it before pushing it wider, which shows they're treating this as a long-term play instead of just a flashy release. The development of both MAI Voice One and MAI One Preview leaned heavily on Microsoft's next-gen infrastructure. They used their custom-built GB200 GPU cluster designed specifically for large generative models and pulled together a team with deep expertise in speech, large-scale systems, and generative AI research. The whole philosophy here is balance. Don't just push theory, make sure it's practical, deployable, and genuinely useful for people. That's why they're designing for efficiency and reliability, not just raw scale. That's all for today's breakdown of Microsoft's big AI moves. If you found this as exciting as I did, drop a comment, hit the like button, and subscribe for more deep dives into the future of AI. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.